Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the regular scheduled work session for City Council for July 6, 2021. It's 6 p.m. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Bridge, Deputy, all the wonderful audience members. <laughs> uh, Ms. Burner, if you'd call roll, please. Sure. Mayor Lowry. Here. Councilman Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Okowski. Here. Councilman Cobb. Here. Councilman Roadwold. Here. Vice Mayor Cook. Here. Seven members present. Thank you very much. And tonight, tonight, what? I'll ask her. She don't trust me with her arm, but oh, okay. Tonight's invocation will be by Councilman Cobb. Yeah. Father, give us the guidance to do what's right for the citizens of this community. Watch over our military and their families. Watch over our first responders, our fire and EMS, and our deputies in town. In Jesus' name, pray, amen. amen. <clears throat> the pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to your Father for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> those are way better than the virtual ones. Way more insane. <laughs> all right, moving on. Pledge, actions on the minutes. Uh, none, communications, none. Two manager report and regular session comments from members of the public. None, there's no one here. Committee reports, none. Resolutions. Uh, ordinances will be done in regular session. Other business, legislation, discussion, and I will hand it over to Mr. Bridge. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Lovely Mayor. Time. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. It's a little less in your face today. <laughs> you know, sometimes you got to reel it back a little bit. Right. You do. But anyway, yeah, thanks for everyone showing up, um, coming. Um, so the legislation on tonight, uh, we have ordinance 21-20. That was introduced on 621 of 2021. That is an ordinance amending Ordinance 2020-07 for the purpose of making the city iPad use policy effective as to additional city board members and to correct your scrivener's error. Um, that is basically to just say, hey, we now have some other boards that have iPads or planning board, board of the appeals. How it was worded the first time is strictly for council. All we're doing is taking anything else that said councils and replacing that with general language that says boards to cover council, planning board, BZA, and anyone sub subsequent in the future. And the Scrivener's error had to do with a numbering issue. So I think we, uh, we uh, when we originally did the thing, we had left out that we had done a policy prior to that. So we're just moving that number back one. So that's the explanation of that one. Any discussion on that particular ordinance? We're good? Okay. The second ordinance up that was also introduced on 621 of 21. And it's up for public and hearing action tonight. That is an ordinance adopting the tax budget for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. For fiscal year beginning January 1, 2022, and submitting the same to the Auditor of Clark County, Ohio. Uh, what that does, it's the very first step of our budget budgetary process. We take that tax budget, we work off the estimated resources that they give us uh, earlier in the year, and basically what that tax budget is supposed to guide us um, for our development of our capital improvement plan and also our uh, 2022 operating budget. So again, just the first step in the overall budgetary process. Uh, we will go ahead and certify that. Um, uh, after the meeting tonight, should it pass in regular session? Uh, any questions on that particular legislation piece? No. 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 Awesome. And the ordinance 2021-22 uh, that is actually introduced tonight will uh, have a public hearing and action on that on 719 of 2021. That is an ordinance authorizing the registration of the new Colorado Mayor's Court with the Supreme Court of Ohio and other state government offices and the filing of any related and necessary reports. Uh, that will give the authority to either myself, Jake, or Pauline to go ahead and register the court, I'm sorry, or Mr. Mayor, to, to register the court within the state of Ohio to various different agencies, Ohio BNB, uh, Traffic Bureau, uh, BCI, et cetera. Uh, so that is another step in the overall goal of getting our mayor's court in. And then we were going to have actually a slew of other legislation that's going to be introduced to you guys um, on that date that we actually build on this. Uh, any questions on that particular legislation? I just had one. Is that, and I know I may have already asked you this, um, you know, I know you deal with all this, all these ordinances and, and resolutions and that, but has this been a, uh, as far as the mayor's court, has it been uh, like uh, over, is it overwhelming? I mean, you know, I know you get into a lot of detailed information and work a lot of times, but is this overwhelming as far as the, the high, you know, what importance it is as far as like 
registering it, things like that? It's not overwhelming. It's been a great learning experience, to be honest with you. Um, it's, it's very uh, intriguing how, how these municipalities do it. Um, so from that aspect of it, it's been, it's been enjoyable. We've had to you know, have our attorneys help more so than any other legislation development, I think, in the past. Right. And then Ms. Harris has actually stepped up a lot. A lot of her legislation pieces you'll see next week as far as fund allocation, what percent goes to where, and stuff like that. But um, it hasn't been too, too hateful. It's time consuming like anything else, but it hasn't been time consuming like, oh, I'm racking my head around it because I don't understand it. Right. Which is completely different than something complicated to that extent. Okay. Yeah. And then I just actually had another question pop up while you were speaking, so I don't know if this is too early to ask or not. Um, it probably is. So, example, say we, we get the court going in and someone gets fined for, let's say, um, I'm trying to think of anything. We'll simplify it. Would all fines or fees go into one fund, or would it get broken up? Like, would, if something was related to tall grass and things of that nature, would it go into like streets and earth? You, you know what I'm saying? Yep, yep. That's stuff we're working on now in the back end. So you guys, you'll see that. You know, and that's a, that's a very, very good question actually, because like, we do have situations where one of our deputies pulls someone over. That ticketed, should, some of that should go back into the police fund. Right. Then you have, you know, if we go ticket someone for property abatement, you know, does that go, you know, equal split 50 50 in the planning and streets and so the one who's doing the abatement? But that, that's the stuff we're trying to get the okay. tail end of the town. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Cotton. Uh, I don't know why I want to rephrase this. You know, one thing, we need to start looking in if we're going to put something on the ballot for a pool. That's the discussion you need to have with them. But I'm, I'm right there with you. But I mean, you know, election year's coming up. We've got a deadline to go ahead to meet and go from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good observation that depending on council wants to do it, you'll have to let me know so I can get the legislation and stuff going to put it on the ballot in what election year. So we do have, in 2022, we got two levies coming up. So council should be aware of that. If you wanted to space that potential bond issue out. Please. Uh, no, police is, I think, good for another, I think, three, four years. That The one coming up in 2022 is our health levy. Okay. Um, that one's crucial because we just, we wash that money and we receive the levy money and we, and we expend it right out to the Clark County Fine Health District. So when I give you guys those reports about plumbing inspections, restaurant inspections, that's what's used to cover that. Um, that usually passes, no, no problem. Yeah. It really, I think last year, I mean, last time around it, it, it passed pretty heavy, but it was also the only ballot measure on. So the other one is the fire and EMS renewal. Right. You know, we passed that, put on the ballot, and passed in 18. It was good for five years. Um, so that's that's that will be a uh, either a replacement if, if we need to add more money to it, or just a renewal. So it's a renewal. It's going to it's going to get the same amount of um, millage according to the how they you know um, assess the value of the property taxes. Now, if it's a replacement, then we can go in and ask for more millage. That's we still don't know what we're going to do that way. We're actually becoming the council with some, with some, um, I don't want to say issues in the fire department, but it's it's getting kind of hard to kind of stack it the way it is, with because the the whole, the whole nature of the of the profession has changed greatly over the past 10, 15 years. With volunteers not being able to be on there. Uh, some of our own codes limit how many hours they can have in a, in a pay period. And because we don't have people to staff it, it's either people get the extra hours and therefore we ex exceed what are in our codes just to provide coverage or we leave a hole. I don't think our residents are worthy of leaving a hole in our, in our, in our firing and mess schedule. You know, so we'll be coming to council, we're gonna work out some numbers to um, increase that hourly average they can have and then probably look at some other ways that we can maintain the level of service that our citizens are accustomed, accustomed to with our firing and mess. I got one more. Yes, sir. I'd like to thank Mr. Hensley for giving us the property to shoot the fireworks off. I'd like to thank Mr. Grimm for for helping and also supplying music. Mr. Roadwall, I'd like to thank you for you and your wife for picking up trash and also helping. Along with Mr. Cook, I want to thank the parts. Huh? And get out of the car. <laughs> I just it was there, though. It was there. Yeah, oh, he did. He got out and moved the banner. Oh. He got out and got food. Too. Moral support is important. There you go. <laughs> also, I want to thank Chief Trustee and the Fire Department. They've done oh, a fine job. And I also want you to pass on to Chief Jacobs. 
I don't think they were here, but they were tied up with their own firework. Yeah, we both were. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I want to thank the deputies. They've done a fine job getting traffic moving. Did I leave anybody out? Mrs. Sexton. M oh, Mrs. Sexton and Mrs. Uh, Mullet. Uh, Mullet. Mr. Bridge. At least he showed up and there wasn't no glare. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> sad, but it's funny. I know it is. I didn't hear him. <laughs> There wasn't no glare. <laughs> it was nighttime. He come up at night. It was night. I knew exactly what I was doing. But no, other than that, we had a real good fireworks. And I'm, I'm sorry you wasn't there to see it. I saw pictures. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it really made it on Facebook. A lot of people talked about it. Yeah. It was a good show. More than they did Evans. Yeah. Evans had to run the issues. And also thank Pike. I forgot. Did Pike have a brush truck all they did? No, it was, um, it was Bethel Clark's brush truck. I thought we ended up coming from the fire scene picking their brush truck up and bringing it. Whoever was involved back there, I didn't make it back that short. Group mm -hmm. effort. We all really thank was. you. We want to thank all the people that came. Everybody was well behaved. There were mm -hmm. no issues, as I understand. I think I think we had one accident. That was all it. That was just a private property crash. And <coughs> was all good. I told you not to run out front of them. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to make any more much trash as I thought they would. I picked up two small kitchen garbage bags full. Where was the bigger crowd? In the park or outside the park? The bigger crowd was uh, either back over at Howard's yeah. and. Back in Brewbaker. We didn't have anybody. Really? Well, we blocked it off. Oh, you closed it off. Mm -hmm. Well, you couldn't park down on something. Oh, okay, okay. That did you, good did you notice, though? Did you guys think Main Street up by the business was a little more crowded than normal? Because it yeah. kind of got an elevated. It's been two years. Yeah. So it's kind of uh, you're right. Yeah. Well, you was at Arrow. I was at Arrow. It was busy. They said, yeah. Oh, this year it was busy. Good. Well, they kind of got a good cheat because, you know, because I was looking down where we were at, you kind of looked up and saw those because you kind of, when, once you cross Main Street, you go downhill to get to the park. So I think they had a great seat up on Main Street. I know the barbecue man broke almost $1,000 in three hours. Oh, uh, he went through a lot of pounds of And money. snow cone, they run out of ice, had to go get more. Of course, they have both stayed busy. Yeah, that's good. Well, I want to take an opportunity, if you don't mind, to thank someone actually a body of people and that's, that's council I and mean, you guys have really worked hard to bring this back to your citizens and it's very well received and i hear mr cobb councilman cobb thank the individuals but you guys as a group really need to sit back and, and thank yourselves for allowing that for allowing that program to go on because it does bring great wonder to the city so from your city manager who sees the benefits of that we, we thank you because it's just a great event for the city i wasn't down there all day either <laughs> yeah, i know i tried <laughs> and Mr. Bridge, I will take yours and pass it directly back to the citizens, because obviously without them and the Absolutely. things that they pass, you know, our levies and our, you know, police, you know, we wouldn't have the funds to do it. Absolutely, yeah, they're the ones to pay for it. So. But uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's it's neat, you know, because before we were doing them, I'd never seen fireworks in Nikolai. You always heard and seen the old pictures on Facebook of all the fireworks back in the, you know, whenever it was the 80s mm -hmm. or 70s, and now we get. To you know, create new memories for the newer generations growing up and hopefully keeping their families there. It was an incredible display. Too. Yeah. And I judged the Cannonball Contest at three. The pool was great. looked awesome. Was it? April did a good job with that, with the crowds and all that stuff. I mean, it's just, it's just the ripple effect that one event has is, is gigantic. Yeah. I mean, it, it truly, truly is. So I think everyone who was there had, had a great time, and that's the whole point of it. The next year, the Great American Firework Hunt. Man, I'd like for that to happen. My only council at least double that budget, if you don't mind. You get a good, good show. The I don't know if you've heard it, uh, Mr. Britt. Can I, can I give you the? Can I mention you on this? Absolutely. Okay. He had an idea. You've seen the TV show, and I don't know if that's where you got it, the Great American uh, Christmas Light Fight, where everybody from each of the. He, he come up with the idea of the Great American, whatever you call it, the Great American. Firework, uh, you know, basically two different companies going against each other. Mm -hmm. 
end of town. Boom, boom. Because I don't think north I've ever seen south. it. Five seventy uh, uh, north of Lake versus south of Lake. The north versus south. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're gonna have to reword that a little yeah. bit yeah. for the event, but you know, you see where I'm getting. At. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an idea. Well, you could you know? split north and south so that you have the east versus the west. Well, I always remember there was an article in the paper when north and south side of the lake, there was people arguing that the north side of the lake always got the better street, or it was the south side of the lake that got the better streets versus the north side. Of the lake. Mm -hmm. so that's what I was referring to. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that'd be a cool idea. And I don't know of any other city that does. Has it ever been done anywhere? I don't know. I don't know if we'd be the be a first. good sales pitch for our city. Yeah, it's gonna be harder to sell a patch to get two companies to go get together. Right. But yeah, no, <laughs> we gotta start somewhere. <laughs> I know we owe Chief Preston a big thanks because it went a little bit longer. I don't know what he done. Yeah, what did you do down there? What's that? What did you do down there? Did you get the show to go a little longer? With the fire uh, uh, It just had, he happened to have a little bit of extra. No, gotcha. A little extra. Yeah, and he, he goes, we, we kind of loaded a little bit more and said, works for me. So, <laughs> thank you for that approval. We appreciate that. <laughs> thank you, sir. Yeah, they were good people to work with. They really are. Hands down. Very professional. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Mr. Bridge, do you have anything else? I'm good. Council. I'm, I'd like to take some time, if we can, now with... Uh, all of us here together in terms of thinking about how we plan for what we want the city to do instead of basically reacting to what happens. <coughs> think it out and start to plan to do something next year and the year after that and the year after that to get to some kind of a bigger goal. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, I think we we had talked before about having a retreat, and um, I'd like all of us to think of things that we would like to see happen in the city. Um, I know when I came back, the, the woman in town who's making the t-shirts. The water tower? Yeah, with the water tower. She made me one that just said, raised in New Carlisle. Peggy's the only one in our family who can go who's born and raised. Um, but I was thinking about it and my my PhD is in local economics. And when I came back here, I thought it would be really great to be thinking about how we can promote business in town. I don't know, some, some cities are using local currencies where you can, if you buy, some of them do it, if you buy stuff, you get credits towards buying local currency and it can only be spent in town. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that might be one thing we could do. You know, do we want to, um, I don't know. What do we want to see happen in the town? Do we want to have some kind of a recreation person who would have programs during the summer at the parks? Um, just think about things that could happen, that we could make happen mm -hmm. to make the city better. Plan and do. Right. Anybody want to touch on that at all? Are we, are we on tap for the coffee and donuts <coughs> next Saturday? <clears throat> uh, Do we need a notification in the paper for that? I don't think we've done one last time. Did we do a legal answer to the coffee and donuts? No, I think I did put it in there though on the bottom that they will have coffee and donuts. Just this past time. We spoke it in. We need everybody to get the Facebook card. I'll, so that all I'll of your following knows it's happening and we encourage them to come. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, I wish they're all going to go. We need to do that we'll get, we'll put it out. We have more than four counts. We got it. 
I'm good. Hold on for a second. We're going to see if it might already be. If already, you might have put a little blur. I might have put, like, act, when I do the legal ads, I put, like, upcoming meetings. And so since you, uh, 10, don't, 10 dozen is fine, right? Dozen, 10 dozen donuts. We had six dozen the last time, but I would imagine being downtown, farmer's market, you're going to need more than that. Oh, speaking of which, with the farmer's market move, you're not going to get traffic down by that way. So you might consider setting up a tent at the farmer's market, which is in CVS's parking lot. You just get a sign in a corner that says, free Bill's Donuts this way. <laughs> uh, they'll show up. You better buy more Be if you're going to put a sign yeah. <laughs> We'll have more down at our end than the farmer's market will have. That, that means we've got to hire extra deputies. Right. Yeah, we will take all the donuts. We know they'll be. You ain't got to take that. <laughs> right, right. You got the cut. You know, Bill's is good. So. Okay. Huh? Um, it's that one on one side. Do we want to bring up about that pool? Saturday. 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 Okay, we briefly touched on the fact of the possibility of putting a bond issue or some type of a levy on for the pool in the upcoming election. Are you going to need a motion from the council? Oh, oh yeah. So you want to do that in regular session? As council all want to do that? You guys want to have another, another meeting on that? I mean, because there's a lot to it than just bond issue. I mean, you got to tell me how much you're willing to spend. I mean, there's a lot that goes into that. Yeah. Well, and, and I would assume that if council wants to do this, we're going to have to get moving on it pretty quick. Well, it depends on what election cycle you want it on. Do you want it on the first, like, November, this November election? I mean, I, I do want my honest opinion. That's I think it's really... Too, yeah, we're too close. Yeah. It'd be cut close. Cause we have to have everything done in at least three months before. Mm -hmm. And then, honestly, I mean, we probably need to get another person down here to give you guys opinion if you're going to build a new pool, sort of just one. And then, really, council needs to really think about what election cycle you want it on. If it's at November 2021, everyone and their brothers going to come out to vote. Versus if it's an off election, like on a May yeah. meeting, you'll have low, lower turnout. But so you have the case go for the 22. That's wherever you guys want to move forward. But there's strategy when you put stuff on the ballots like that. I mean, well, there truly, there truly are. Well, I was also thinking of if you went November 2022, that would give you time, you plenty of time to uh, I mean, that, investigate the uh, possible funds of that grant. If, if there's anything there that which would chip away at something, you know, I don't know how that would work. At your guys' area. I mean, it's going to take some. It's going to take some work. Council needs to, you know, set some guidelines, and we're going to do some research. Um, I think 2022, it's somewhere it would be appropriate. But again, like I said, we've got two other ballot measure, measures going on. You know, so that's something you have to think about. You don't want to load three initiatives on one ballot because something's going to fail. But you also want to kind of make sure that you, you strike on the iron side of the time continues to improve. improve. Yeah. Uh, people so. are a little bit more uh, willing to, to share a few more things. <coughs> if it was reverse. Yeah, I mean, I would assume you would, you not necessarily, you, you us, mm -hmm. the city would have to uh, probably start with, you know, Howie and a, and a builder and what kind of, if, I mean, I know he gave a rough estimate of, I think, 1.2 to 1.5 to, to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just the pool. That's just, that's on the assumption that we, I guess, put it in the same place. If we have to land right. acquisition, if we have to prep that land, if we want to move somewhere else. Reconfigure. Yeah, reconfigure. I mean, there's just a lot that goes into it. I would hate to be rushed to get it on for November 2021 because that's a lot of work to be done in a very short amount of time. Um, and not enough time to come over. That too, because that one you, we're going to have to hit the ground on. You know, with the help of it, we can go and put a door flyer in. Pretty much explains it. But you're putting a bond measure on for that much. You're looking at multiple council meet and greets with the citizens. You know, pictures up on a board. People walk. I mean, it's that, that, that that's a process. Yeah. It truly is. And I want to do it right and not rush it. Because, I mean, how you guys sell it is how the citizens are going to internalize that, you know. Uh, One of your bigger things on your plate right now is probably the mayor's court, right? 
Uh, mayor Holt. I mean, I know you've got uh, Yeah, mayor of sports a big one. We have the ARP funds coming up we have to address. We have, um, if you have city manager report coming up next week, you guys will get your veterans banner policy. You're going to get that request for a proposal for the fixed assets. Um, we have, um, in August, we also have the certification to the auditor for abatements. Um, and we have some other policies coming your guys' your, your way. Um, so right now to throw that on us would be a lot, to be honest with you. It, it truly would. That's what I'm saying. Would your, would your plate be a little cleared up at the beginning of next year? I think if you let us in January, when things start to slow down with all these big projects, that we'll have some room to breathe a little bit, and that's where we can probably start hammering down, you know, some, some ins and outs. Um, if you just want my honest opinion. Even later on, like, November. I mean, right now, this summertime, we're just, we got a lot going on right now. All good stuff. When are the union negotiations starting? We are starting those probably at the end of next month. So that's another big ticket item. Thanks for reminding me that. It's another big one. All right. I had mentioned before about uh, putting two council people on that negotiating committee. Um, is this something council wants to do or is this you mean for us not to negotiate for us to sit in right that's what he's saying which is what we have done i believe in the past yeah i don't think that's going to work this time around i think last time it went around that it's bad practice <clears throat> didn't didn't one of our attorneys give us an opinion on that um I don't know, that was like four or five years ago yeah because it's not going to eliminate the, the original thing was eliminate the middle man going back and forth. If you have two people on here, you're not eliminating that. You're still coming back to council. Right. You know. Um, yeah, but I, I think, know, I think I you'll be the first council in history to actually be part of the negotiations because that would go against the former kind of government we have. Well, if I remember right, you're, I mean, I know that if, for conversation's sake, if someone went in one or two council members, they're not allowed to, you know, they're not allowed to put their two cents in. They can't. They couldn't even be at the negotiating table. They would have to sit in a separate room. But if you do that, you probably want at least three, and then but you're still going to have to bring stuff back to discuss with the resident council. Mm -hmm. right. So that, if it was like four in there, you guys can make that decision, but then you're not bringing it back, you know, for the rest of the group to vote on. But then if you have more than three, then you got to advertise it. we got to be open so that doesn't work. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, I, if just one or two, I mean, two at least, I think that would be just interesting to, to sit in on the process. I don't, I would, I mean, that's, a, that's, that would be unique. And that would probably be the first council to ever do that. Um, I mean, I Huber thought we does it, Dayton does it. Does it. Um, Huber Council does not fit in. Yes, it is. I will, I'll look into that, but that's, um, that's almost but, unheard of. But I don't think it's against the law or rules. No, but it is a definite way to, micromanage someone in a way so i'm not sure how the union feel about that um again it serves no point but you're not bypassing the back and forth because you're still going to have two people on it still going to come to council and talk about executive session you're not bypassing in time so really what would be the point to have two council members on there if you have no authority and you really couldn't influence it I think it'd be just an interesting educational point to, to see how it's done. I mean, I know how it's done. I mean, I've sat through them before, but because I have no no desire to sit through them. Right. And I have done that. Yeah. Anything else, sir? No, I'm done. Todd, Todd, you're very well. That's it. Do you guys want me to look into if you can have four Do you guys want me to look into if you can have four people there? You still have to advertise it, so if someone in the citizens wants to come there, but if you do that, the only way to make it somewhat logical is to have those four people to act on behalf of council, so I can go back to you guys and be like, hey, this is what they're doing. Do you guys agree with this or not? But then you're still not. I just don't see how that works. And, yeah, I don't know how that would work. No, I don't, I don't think you might want to four people. No, I would say I two. I desire two. Okay. I think I have that ordinance on one of my files. And that last time it went down is in 18. It went down when Ethan did a little back then. What ordinance? I only think like I only think it came to a vote for council, though, did it? I think it died for lack of motion. It may have. 
What was it? What what was the, the mo we brought 18 when this when we tried it. You mean a motion to yes. have people go in? Yeah, because I'm the one, I think me and you, we were talking about it and we thought, well, that would be a good idea. Then we brought it to council and then council even said in 18, it's not really bypassing any time saving oh, issue. Okay. Okay. And then it, the, I can't remember if it was Lynette or Jay, who said that's just uncustomary practices. Um, yeah, it had to be. Yeah, you're right, because Jay could come on to like 20. 20. I think that's what it was. All right. Anything else, Mr. Grimm? Mm -hmm. Ms. Eagleton? Mm -hmm. Mr. Murkowski? Audience? <laughs> right. Chief? No, oh, one. Hold on. Chief, do you have anyone to. Mr. Garner? Yeah. Okay. No. If we've got some time, why don't we talk about when we could get together for some kind of a... I think I brought it out the uh, last yeah. meeting within the next 30, 60 days, if I remember right. What do you guys would like to do? So I've been working on stuff the past two weeks. I think you guys will get some more information probably for the next meeting when it comes to that, potential locations, what you can do. So you guys still need to get your topics down and what you want to I mean, I can get this. The, I can get the venue, time and date, but I can't get your, you know, what you guys want to do and the point of that together. So, I mean, one one of the things that I mean, it's got to be an open meeting for the public. Right. One of the things that crossed my mind has crossed my mind is. Would it be wise of us to divide the city into essentially four precincts or three precincts? We've got, I don't remember how many precincts are in town now for mm -hmm. normal elections. Five. Four or five. Because there's Is one that, very small precinct. Like it's tiny. That's going to take yeah, the change. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. But you know where it is? I right. think it's I uh, mean, but uh, carpet, having. Uh, pull and carpet. Having. Carpet, 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 exactly. One having a precinct have an elected official, and then the other ones at large, so that if people have an issue, they have a single person that they can go to and say, you know, I'm interested in this. Because I don't see any real easy access for citizens to approach council other than standing up in here, you know, just having someone that they could go and say, we've got this issue and whatever. And at that point, I, I will have to say for some reason then I'm getting the call. Because I had I didn't hear it. a call over the weekend about Bell Manor and maybe Mr. Well, at that point, I've also had several calls about the situation on some cats. Anyway, just to name something else. Yeah. And our phone number doing this. Right. Newsletter. Um, you know, the only the only problem I have with that, again, if you have a person in the designated ward that they call, and that person chooses to ignore that. that I would much rather have all seven of us on the situation that you can call any one of the seven. If I drop the ball, they still can call on me or whatever. And I, I, I am personally against the, okay. the war. Yeah, I mean, I think we're pretty excess, accessible. I mean, it's, it don't get much easier than this. I mean, you can find us anywhere on social media, email. I mean, I don't know how many people have got my phone number that I have no idea how they got it. <laughs> I've got phone, uh, phone messages, emails, Facebook. I mean, it's a good idea if we were a larger city. But I think, you know, I mean, we're so, I mean, I don't think we were small, but, you know, we were a dating or, or even you know, something like that. We're, we're um, getting access, or even Hoover. Uh, it would be difficult. But it's big enough to imagine. Uh, 
gallery the way it's kind of dispersed. It's a, it's a great idea. I just think it's, it's, it's a solution to, I don't think, a, a, a problem. I mean, if, 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 if it's a big enough issue a citizen has, they're going to reach out. Whether it's here or like, like, like Mike and Bill said, they'll, they we'll find, they'll find us. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, trust me, they'll find us. Correct <laughs> me if I'm wrong, Mr. Bridge. When you set up the city website, everybody's phone number is on there, correct? Yeah. Council. So there's the way that people get hold of everybody on the city website. I, I was on there today, and I'd sure like to see everybody's biographies up there. Yeah, most of them don't have biographies up there. <laughs> I'm starting to have a <laughs> Now you have no shoes. I <laughs> Uh, Mr. Bridge. Sorry. Mr. Bridge. So uh, the yeah, council no. retreat. <laughs> I think at regular session, what I'm going to ask council to do is, is form a council retreat committee where there's like three of you who's on there. That way I don't have to go back and wait to go back. I mean, Emily were just kind of talking. I think maybe a good spot to start with is maybe the first meeting in August. All council members bring like a list of top five things they want to see concerns of the city, how you want it to move forward, any policies you want us to look at that we currently have, or maybe new ones. Um, that way we can start getting down that agenda that you guys want to do for the actual retreat. I mean, I, I know when you say retreat, we say retreat, we have said retreat. I mean, it's still a work session, is it not? It's just it's a, a current point maker. It's, a, it's, okay. a, it's an active work session. Okay. Yeah. With food. With food. Oh. Like these things are happens. all, this yeah. is not like, three, there, these yeah. are not like a three or four hour event. These <laughs> things are multiple days. Right. What I want to do is find someone who's going to come in and guide us. There's professionals out there that actually work with city councils and work with administration about how to make these things effective. We're going to do it. We're going to spend the money. We might as well come out the other end with the policy that's going to help us council's vision. Right now we're working on a comp plan that was from 2012. You know, so, you know, the whole point of these retreat is for council to get together to, as a whole so you can, you know, develop the policies how you want us to move forward. Um, but retreat's just a fancy work that's, that's really all. Is that something that we should do before or after you think the uh, budget or session? Budget's going to have no impact on the retreat. I mean, there's nothing like in the budget that's going to come of it. Um, and the budgets, I mean, that's a work, a day or two of work sessions. Right. Right. Well, I didn't know, depending on like what ideas somebody may have, if it was something that needed to be adjusted in the budget for next, you know, the next year or whatever. Yeah. Well, we got that coming up relatively soon, yeah. so I don't know if we'll have that timing. We can always amend the estimated resources, but, you know, I mean, this is, like I said, these retreats are <clears throat> they're very important just to get everyone on the same page. And, you know, I think forward to the retreat is basically a sharing of ideas and direction for where the next four years might direct this city to go. Well, that too, I'd like to see some aspect of this retreat to have a professional come in to kind of help us, you know, get in the ins and outs of our form of government and what's truly council's role and what's my role so there is no confusion with that moving forward. So there could be multiple, multiple things this retreat could, could cover. You know, um, but then that's ultimately your guys' decision what you want on that agenda. Um, and we got to start thinking about budget. You know, how much of a, how much of a budget you want to spend on this? Do we have it here and have someone else come in? Do we go somewhere else? You know, so there's still a lot of rocks to be uncovered with, with how you guys want it to set up. What do you think, sir? Well, I'm, I'm sitting here. <coughs> I guess the word is knowing there are three of us up for election. And I don't know where those three seats are going to go, whether we're, mm -hmm. we're going to be uh, back in these seats or whether there will be new people. I, I'm, I guess <clears throat> I'm sitting here thinking, would it be apropos to wait until the new council is in place? That's a very good idea. And if, so there's, any said change, that, yeah. and if there's any change in the 
charter. Yeah, you're right, because that's going to be how it's coming too. So that's, that's a good point. You now strategize when you have that retreat, given what's coming up with the budget, given what's coming up with the new council, given what's coming up with charter review. You may want to have all those things squared away before you really get into that, you know, deciding how the city's going to move forward. It's actually a really good observation on your behalf, because we don't want to go and spend all this money and then three new people come in and have a completely different Well, thing. that's that's what I'm looking at, yeah. again, being chief and approval one. Would it be better to put this into play late January, early February of next year? Yeah, because then we can put a budget line item for, for the 2022 budget. I think that's a really good idea. What kind of money do you think we're talking Depends on where we go and how we bring in. It's really, you can spend a little bit on it and you can have just, you guys get together and bounce your ideas around. And uh, to me, it, this is something that has such a lasting impact on the city for years to come, especially if there's any kind of policy development after. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I, you want, you want, you probably want someone, you want a moderator. You want someone to come in here and kind of help us and guide us along the way. Um, but if you, I, I don't know. I don't want to speculate. Really much, really. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, we can always get on a plane and go like way to the retreat if we really want to use the word retreat. You know, <laughs> but we're not going to. Do well, that. I I know Springfield had one just recently on the call. Call them, yeah. They yeah, they drop and, and see what kind of fights they do on it. See what they did. Mm -hmm. Dave is a very good person. Yep. Uh, and there, coming from them, I think there's been. Several other cities in the area I've looked on the web and the talk about it. Uh, I think before maybe next meeting we could get together with some of those people and get some kind of a budget <coughs> put together. Yep. So I think once we you know, go back to the regular session, if you guys want to do the council, <coughs> council retreat committee, it would be a great place to start. Get them, get whoever you want on it, and we'll start working it out. All right. Anything else? Uh, my question if you have all council together to retreat that to come from public event. Yeah, right? Yeah, oh yeah, we did it'd be advertised. I mean I don't think a lot of citizens show up, but you at least have to market it as I mean and they'd be they, it'd be totally awesome if a lot of citizens did show up. Well, <laughs> yeah, well that's something we have to take into account when we look at the venues. Mm -hmm. And we can't just limit people to twenty seats. Mm -hmm. You know, we kind of have to keep it open to the public. That's why I think some of these people either go out somewhere or have enough big enough venue to do it. But I think there's a lot of low-hanging fruit up there that we can call around Springfield. It's very common for these things to happen. That we can get information from other municipalities how they've handled it. Another center? <laughs> Actually, they've got a room in there. You could rent. What's the uh, what's the place west of town? Aleron. I'm already on it. <coughs> Aleron. Aleron or whatever it is. Aleron. Aleron. Oh, look on Wildcat Road. Yeah. 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 That's a gorgeous facility, too, by the way. Yeah. Gorgeous. And they do those type of things, and that's right. what I'll be calling that. You, you know, we got one person in Springfield who will come down hard if it's not information. Man, my ear right here, I can't hear out of this ear right now. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't state any names. Up right here. No. <laughs> yeah, but you do have to open up to the public, and anyone can come. All right. What else? Mr. Durham. Motion by Mr. Fobbs. Motion by Fobbs. Second by Mr. Durham to adjourn. Cobb. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilwoman Olkowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Motion to adjourn accepted 17. 17.